Hi everybody, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, today we have Manuel Bruscas uh, from Edwims. Edwims is one of the few digital native companies that we have uh, here in Barcelona that use intensively uh, data analytics, uh, machine learning, all these technologies to become a data-driven company. And uh, well, thank you so much for coming here. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, we would like to know a few things about the dreams and how do they work and also the personal experience of um, uh, how a data-driven company works. And the first thing, tell us something about you. How did you land in Edims? Do, you, do you come from computer science or do you come from business? Or, uh, what is your history here? So, in reality, w when I was a child, I, ri uh, I really liked playing with numbers and data. That was something I was doing. But at the end, I ended up studying business at Estade, right? Uh, but then, when I started to work, I, I realized I really liked the idea of uh, telling stories with actual data. I learned how powerful using data uh, to generate insights could be. Mm -hmm. So that, that really changed my mind. So it wasn't like a straight way. So I knew always that I wanted to work around data, but after some backs and forth, I like, hey, this is my way. This is what really thrills me, and, and it's really why I end up working in the analytics in, in industry. Wow, that's fascinating. And uh, what about Edwims? Edwims is a company very different from many other companies. I mean, you are digital natives. You don't see your clients. Your clients always hide <laughs> behind a, a, a computer screen, and you only see your clients through your data. Uh, how does it work? How does it, this thing of uh, being in a native computer, uh, being in a native uh, data-driven company? I, I love it, I have to say. So first, let me emphasize what you just said, which is yes. uh, eDreams is a truly international company uh, with headquarters in Barcelona. So I would say that's quite uh, unique because so there are not mm -hmm. many companies, right? So uh, since we are a digital company, data is not an option, it's a must, right? So when you're a digital player, you are still like constantly need to collect data and act upon the data to improve the customer experience, to define your pricing, to improve your operation. So it's really like you don't have any other option but being data driven, so I think that is fantastic. And that's why we have uh, in different teams across the company, in the marketing team, in the fraud team, in the revenue team, different teams are really using data to make uh, better decisions. And what is like really interesting is that we are learning that we could do even more, right? So it's like never-ending journey. So I would say that being a digital company makes things easier because you don't have uh, other option but using data. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fascinating. You, you have been working in other companies, in non-digital companies, in many of them, I guess. And um, how do you compare? What is the what are the main difference in terms of the organization? I mean, normally in, in normal companies in non-digital companies, all these data we think depends on marketing or, I don't know, tell us about what are these main yeah. differences. So, uh, you name it, eh? it's like in digital companies, as we were saying before, it's really like uh, data is uh, across everything. In a, let's say, traditional business, uh, the first thing that happens is that there is this artificial divide between offline and online, right? So mm -hmm. typically a traditional business is offline, and years ago, people realized they could do something online and they created the online team, which is very like, you understand why that happened, but it's like really doesn't really make sense. But that creates a, a, a line between offline and online and the same applies to data, right? So in the online, typically you have, a, in, in traditional business, the online team is typically the first department really using data because again, the digital environment is so dynamic, so agile that you need data. But that creates some friction uh, between, uh, let's say, digital and non-digital teams in the company. Good news is that at the end, uh, customers do not really care about offline, online, right? So when they I buy something from a company, they don't care about the channel. Mm -hmm. So that is making, or that is forcing traditional companies to really be more like, as uh, is the best word, uh, omni-channel, right? So offering a, a unique customer experience and therefore that makes things slightly easier, but definitely there's a challenge uh, when you have these traditional companies where digital is still like more the newcomer and it's not like embedded. Uh, the good news is said, eh? this is changing and increasingly digital is playing a much more relevant uh, role in the company and therefore digital and data and analytics plays a more uh, relevant role. So. In, uh, many companies are in this transformation of becoming data driven. Yeah. Uh, I guess you need different skills, you need a different organization, you need different capabilities. From the point of view of a native digital company like Dreams and so on, how do you see this path? 
what the other companies can learn from your experience? So I, I think, and that's across, uh, that's regardless of the company, uh, you always need like uh, top management commitment. So even if in digital, you say that uh, data driven is, uh, is a must have, you still need the top management commitment, I think. So um, that is the beginning of everything, right? So how do I see this evolving? So becoming more sophisticated and more savvy, right? So using more uh, machine learning and, uh, and really bringing to the next level and, uh, and trying to uh, improve your algorithms. If you are more on a traditional business, the journey I see is that you define two, three use cases, really bring good results, and then you bring confidence to the top management around how good things could be if you use data. That, mm -hmm. that is really li li like the path. And typically in some business, and I always like the, the example of a Starbucks, the Starbucks, they are selling coffee, right? But what happens in Starbucks is they soon learn the importance of first, mobile, everyone is wearing a mobile nowadays, mm -hmm. and second, being customer-centric. So in US right now, it's very interesting, they create a fantastic loyalty experience. So 25% of transactions in a Starbucks, in a physical Starbucks, mm -hmm. happen through an app. Imagine people are ordering coffee through the app. So th that is really sort of, of, of the journey, is really looking for business cases, use cases, that really see the value of using data to offer their customer experience or reduce cost or improve efficiency. So I think that that is the, the way to do it. You need the top management commitment and then you need a couple of three use cases that are really powerful and build confidence and trust. The worst thing you could do is like go too fast, try to be data driven just because we want to be data driven and then uh, things are going to be like really hard to move forward. We have been talking to some of the people here and, and they told us that you use a lot of experimentation. Yes. <laughs> and because you don't always have the data, you, you have sometimes to create it. The data is not there. Uh, can you tell us a, a little bit more about how do you experiment, what do you do with that, how do you create data, what are the insights that you get from that? So I think uh, everything starts around a business question, right? So you say, okay, we have this business decision or business question, so a business wants to make a decision, right? And then the good news is that as a company, we are in that uh, setup that people say, okay, bring me some data. We are not going to make big decisions just because I think, I believe, right? So that is good in the initial part of the process. So when you have, uh, that, that is good, but you need the data, right? So uh, what we are doing is like once someone defines a good business case or a business use or a business question, we say, okay, which data do we have? If we have the data, that's an easy one. If we don't have, we try to create an environment to get the data and might be through A-B testing, might be through a lab, might be like more uh, crunching historical data or looking for a third party to provide panel information. So uh, it, it's really following that process, business question and then either use existing data or try to create. And in some cases, you, are, you, you have to be clear and say, you know what, we cannot answer that question now because we don't have the data and we need to invest. So you say, okay, that question is gonna be addressed in X months from now, but you start building the right infrastructure to capture the data because you still think that's such an important business decision that I don't want to wait uh, just for people to have an opinion. And if I don't have the data, we will have to build it. Right, mm -hmm. so the infrastructure, the processes, and everything. So that's a collective effort, I would say. And in some cases, it's faster. In some cases, it's slower. But I think that's part of the DNA, right? So bring me the data, and after that, we can have a discussion based on, on data. Versus, I think, I believe, I guess, type oh, of discussion. Uh, you know that in SAD we are trying to put in place, or we are putting in place this new master. It's a master on business analytics. And, uh, well, it's a little bit complicated because it's a business school and it's not full of geeks. We are not a technical school. And this is a geeky world, <laughs> so everybody is a geek. Uh, what do you think that non-geeks need to thrive in this world? Is there a space and opportunity also for non-geeks? In fact, let me challenge you a little bit, if you allow yeah. me, oh, which is, uh, I think in the analytics, you need both geeks and non-geeks um, because at the end, my people might be great in building models and algorithms, but still they need to have the ability to communicate with business or understanding the business questions. And at the end, uh, when you have an analytics team, you want to have a right balance as a team of people which are really like more technical and with a good ability to code, to program, but still you want to have people which are having a good business mindset, able to identify which are the business needs. Because the worst thing for an analytics team is like running analysis, making algorithms, doing uh, fancy things which are not useful because no one in the business understands, right? So you always need that combination and it's great if you find a person having both skills 
but that's more a rara avis, right? Mm -hmm. So at, at the end, you need to have in your teams a balance between more technical guys, some technical people, mm -hmm. and more like uh, business sense guys, and then you need to combine both of them. Uh, to make sure that you address and, and create a good like the stakeholders, let's say management. Some people also need to talk to the IT, to the back, uh, to the background, right? So in, in terms of platforms, so some people in your team need to be like good in understanding the platforms and technicalities. And nowadays, this is evolving that fast that no one can know everything, right? So mm -hmm. that romantic idea, it would be good in this, why I said, that's great, but that is not true. Mm -hmm. You have so many languages, so many technologies, and this is changing, that if you want to become a specialist of everything, that, I mean, if, whoever does that is probably uh, gonna rule the world. Mm -hmm. And that is not gonna happen. That's why I, I, I would recommend people not being super technical, don't panic, learn the basics, make sure you have some background in statistics and in programming, but someone else will be doing that. You need to be to replace them because they are probably better than you will ever be, right? So don't be obsessed on that geek, uh, yeah. which a bit is... Uh, <laughs> but yeah, fantastic. In, in terms of our students, what do you think, what are the key areas that they have at least to learn a bit? Maybe yeah. not to master because to master these things and that are evolving all day long, it's so fast, it's complicated, mm. but at least to grasp there's one, uh, let's say, to me, prerequisite, yes. and this is something that obviously you could learn, but this comes here, yeah. is having that, uh, let's say, ability to challenge the environment, mm -hmm. question everything, right? So that, let's say, critical uh, approach to things, that's part for sure of anyone working in the analytics, right? Because if you are gonna use the data, you need to be sure about what is true, what is not true. So uh, having that ability that you question and challenge everything, that's a must have. So some people have that as part of the previous background, some people do not, so make sure you have that because you could be a fantastic programmer, but if you don't know anything about reality and you don't question the data, maybe you just say, oh, this number is really awkward, so maybe my model is wrong because that there's an outlier. If you don't have that ability to question yourself, that is gonna put you, in, let's say, even if you are great in the uh, technical side, uh, if you don't have that uh, approach of question the state of school, uh, you're gonna fail, right? So I would say that is the first thing. So let's say you have that and you come from the business side. I think some basis on the statistics is good, mm -hmm. definitely. Also some knowledge on uh, some of the most often uh, used tools uh, like R, Python, but just the basics to understand the potential, I would say, mm -hmm. because again, you're probably gonna find guys around you with much stronger experience and you are not going to master them, but at least you want to understand, hey, this is what the tool potentially could do, and you want to learn that there are so many libraries in R that maybe you could do a fantastic cluster analysis just by uh, downloading certain libraries. Mm -hmm. So you want to know that. Yeah. Otherwise, you will try to create yourself from scratch, right? So mm -hmm. I would say that would be the, 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 the basics. And then I think it, uh, it's very important to find that inner voice, inner self voice saying, hey, this is really what thrills you, what makes you dream and being happy, because that is gonna be uh, if you need to do something, you need to be passionate, right? So uh, you have to find that inner voice saying, hey, this is what I really yeah. enjoy, I like. Yeah, that's so much too. You have, you need to have passion for what Absolutely. you Absolutely. Passion it's is a must-have in life and working too. Yeah. One last question. In the audience, we have many people that probably uh, aspire to be in data science, work in, the, in this environment. If you had to advise them just one thing, what would be the one thing that you would advise them to do? So you say, find your own passion, and that's gonna be key, uh, because that the, the rest follows, right? So if you have the passion and an obsession on that passion, then you will make sure that you get all your dreams through that sort of approach, because the rest you can learn. The passion is what is really unique to you, and you need that, and, mm -hmm. and talk to yourself, look at the mirror and say, hey, this is what I want to, to do, and this is what I mind, and then move forward. Thank you so much and thank, thank you. you so much to you all for being with us and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.